Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and it's that time of the year again to do a what's on my iPhone for early 2019. Many of you have been asking me to do this video again, and so if you've been following me for any period of time, you'll know that this is not much different than I've had for years at this point, and I probably should change it up a bit and I'll do that in the future. But the way I arrange icons is I keep everything I touch the most down here. I just deleted an app that I don't use that much. So uh, this is everything I use the most. And then everything I use secondary goes on the second page. And there's actually a third page, which I'll have to look at. I'm not sure what's there. So you can see pretty straightforward from the top phone maps, photos, camera, just basic apps and Google Maps. I use Google Maps probably more than I use Apple Maps, but I do go back and forth from time to time. And notes. I use notes for a lot of things when I'm taking notes for video ideas, things like that. I have not found an app that I like better because it just syncs between everything I use. My iPad and my Mac and my phone it just goes between them. It's easy to use and manage. I can search it. I know where it is, and that's what I use. It works well. I don't organize things into folders. I just search for it and it seems to work fine. Of course, the app store settings, home to manage lights, things like that. So my studio lights on, if I tap on it, it's off. I'm just using a cheap managed switch or a little plug that has a switch in it that connects to this. Again, studio light panel, same thing. You'll see the light on my left over here. I can turn that off. I can use Siri with it or whatever I'd like. Then Amazon and a few more social media networks or folders. And then news. This is what I use for news. I still use Heartfeed for news. I don't really use Apple News. And I find that I use Google News more than anything. If I go to here, of course, I have a YouTube folder with all the things I use regularly. And reminders. I find that I use reminders from Apple the most. Now I've used different ones to try reminders, but I just find it's the easiest to use. It's kind of native to everything. I'll say set a reminder for whatever, and it sets it for me. I don't have to think about it. And it syncs across Mac and iPad, Instagram and Twitter. I use often. And then inbox unfortunately is going away in March for some reason. I think it's a ridiculous move from Google as far as that goes. So I'm trying to find something else. I really don't like the Gmail app, but I like to manage that email natively in a Google app. Twitter, of course, Pocket Casts is my podcast. I've used this for a long time and I go back and forth between this and Overcast. If there's another one I should know about though, let me know. I may try and switch all these out and see what it's like. So on my second page, you'll see there's Gmail. And what I kind of do is organize everything here with stuff I probably don't want to delete, or maybe I would, but I just don't want to have to reinstall. And then the bottom is things that I've more recently installed. So under social, you'll see there's some social networks, things I don't need to go in normally from just tapping on, but if I get a notification, I can tap it and it will open. Entertainment, uh, these I use the most, well, TV, but movies links accounts together. So movies I would highly recommend. I use it between Google Music or Google Movies rather and also iTunes. And what it does is anything I've purchased between the two, I can view on the others. So it just links them together. It's sort of like the movie companies know that you've already bought it. And then I can either watch it on Google devices or I can watch it on Apple TV or my phone or whatever I have. Of course, there's Xbox here and Xbox is just to manage my Xbox account. I use that to play games and things. Fandango, Adam, just movie tickets. And occasionally I use that and Google trips. Under photos and videos, there's some great photo apps, ProCam for taking photos. You'll see I can control everything from autofocus, white balance, ISO, and even record or take photos in RAW and HDR and everything like that. So if I really want to control the photo, I can do it there. iMovie for editing, although I never use it on the phone. Enlight, Layout, and then Google Photos, which I actually find I use more often now. Filmic Pro, this has been around for a while. If you haven't used this, this is great for making videos. It lets me fully control it like it was a full cinema camera or whatever like I'm using right now. You've got your, your white balance temperatures. You've got your different frame rates. You've got your levels for audio, all sorts of things. And then you can control it remotely if you're using an iPad or another phone with Filmic Remote. So you can get the shot all set up and see it with Filmic Remote and maybe film yourself. It works really, really well. Food is pretty straightforward. <laughs> There's just a few food apps in there. Nest, LifeX is, again, some more lights that I use from time to time. 
And then finance, I use MoneyWiz a lot. The rest are just banks, so I'm not going to go into that. Under audio, uh, there's a couple. I don't know why DJI Go is under audio. I'm not really sure what that's all about. I'll have to put that under utilities or something. But SoundCloud, live air traffic controller. I live in the Charlotte area in North Carolina, in the area. And if you go to the airport, there's actually an observation area, and you can listen to the air traffic controller. Now, someone did recommend a different app as well, but I don't do it enough to, to buy another app. Audible occasionally if I want to listen to to some audiobooks if I'm on a trip or something like that, taking a long trip, and SoundCloud for some music as well. Under utility, I have a lot of things under utility. A decibel meter, uh, Eero to manage my Wi-Fi network, speed test to manage the actual network itself. You'll see that's the last time I measured it. I have fiber and a gigabit to my house. Uh, but over Wi-Fi, it will be a little bit slower depending how much stuff is on the Wi-Fi network. I actually have over 30 devices on my network, so there's a lot going on, and there's probably something using it right now. So, But that's fine for using iPhone. So to stream 4K video, you need a steady 15 megabits per second. So anything above that really is fine for me uh, when it comes to streaming. Uploading, of course, is where I want that extra speed. I've got some benchmarking apps, some Apple Store, Newegg, things like that. More apps. Nothing really exciting in here. Uh, that's the switch that controls my, or that's a switch I've used before that will control your lights. It's a cash app, things like that. Patreon, uh, American. I've thought of doing Patreon, but YouTube now has memberships, and I was thinking of doing that. I'd, I'd be curious to know if you'd subscribe if I did something like that and did a lot of background things. Uh, it's they, they make it a minimum of $5 per month. That's why I haven't done it. But if it's something you're interested in, maybe I'll turn that feature on and maybe do giveaways with that money or other things. I'm not sure. Rove Motion is for a slider that I have. Turo is for renting cars. I was looking into doing some of that. Uh, Weather Channel, 1Password to manage my passwords across different platforms. B&H Photo, I use way more than I should to look at camera gear and things like that. Monument Valley 2, I've completed that and I use it more for videos, so I just leave it there. Under Extras is pretty much all the Apple apps that I don't use regularly on my home screens. And then Feedback, when you're on a beta. Deliveries is quite good for tracking packages and things like that. And many of you have asked me, did you buy a Tesla or are you buying a Tesla? I'm looking at buying a Tesla. I have not purchased one yet. Uh, Minecraft, I've used this for different videos where I compare speeds of boot up times and things like that. And then Gmail. And I hate using it, but it's there. Also, it looks like this I need to move. Uh, it was a social network someone invited me to. And... I haven't used it since. So so that's really it. I don't have anything terribly exciting, but I am thinking of changing it up this year, completely redoing what I use and just trying something different uh, since I'm kind of getting bored with what I have. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you'd like to see more of these, maybe even Android version or an iPad version. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. And of course, I'll link the wallpaper as I always do. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.